Keyforge is a unique deck game and as such I'm thinking I might well do a series of playthroughs of each of my decks. But for today we're going to start with Engold the Harbour Enchantress, V's Base Node, Tower Leader. Engold is a Brobnar Shadows Untamed deck and it's a bit of an unusual one because it's very heavy on artifacts and less so on creatures so it plays quite differently to a lot of the decks out there. While Base Node is a Logos Sanctum Shadows deck and this is very much focused on the Sanctum side of things. There's a lot of powerhouse kind of knights standing their ground, controlling the board going on in this deck. I flipped a coin and Engold here is going to be going first, so you're going to get to watch Engold's hand and play along with him, her, I have no idea. First up we've got a Brobna card, Gauntlet of Command. So this is an artifact and will allow you to ready and fight with a friendly creature. Seeker Needle, which is a Shadows card, again an artifact, Deal one damage to a creature, and if it destroys the creature, gain one ember. One amber, sorry. Uh, another artifact. I did say this was an artifact heavy deck. Uh, this one allows you to, if your opponent has six or more, steal one, which will have balance. So, untamed. So far, not a great starting split here because we've got all three houses out. Uh, we've got another artifact, cannon. Deal two damage to a creature. That's probably not going to be particularly useful with all the armour of Sanctum. Then we've got our first creature, Mighty Tiger. Uh, play, deal 4 damage to an enemy creature. We've got Ganga Chieftain. Another creature, Brobnar this time. Uh, you may ready and fight with a neighbouring creature when you play it, so not a huge amount of help at the moment. And then Anger, our first action, which is Brobnar and allows you to ready and fight with a friendly creature. So we have got four Brobnar cre things there, but they're all about fighting and dealing damage, which isn't going to help us much at the moment. Um, I think what we might need to do is Mulligan. So we draw six cards, and this time we have Nepenthe Seed, which is an Omni, which allows you to get a card out of your discard, which can be quite useful. Uh, Relentless Assault, which is an action to ready and fight with up to three different friendly creatures. And Dew Fairy, uh, which when you reap, gain an extra Amber, which is pretty useful. And, but it is quite weak, so it won't stay there long, that's the problem. Uh, Relentless Whispers, deal two damage to a creature. If it destroys the creature, steal one Amber. So, not bad. And uh, what else we got? We've got Regrowth. Play, return a creature from your discard pile to your hand. And another Dew Fairy. So, I think we'll save the Untamed, because we can only play one card this time. And we've only got one of each of these. Now, they're both actions. They're both actually going to do nothing for us at this point, because there's no creatures to damage with this. However, this one will give us an Ember. So we're going to start, we're going to play this action here, the Relentless Whispers, and all it's going to do is give us one Ember. But that's one Ember towards a key. And we then draw up to six, because we've only got five cards in hand. And our new card is Valda. So it deals an extra two damage while attacking an enemy creature on the flank. So useful. Um, got two of those, four of those. Not a bad split. Then base node's turn. He doesn't have the amber to forge a key. And for his house selection, he's going to go for shadow as well. And he's going to start by playing Magda the Rat, which of course comes in exhausted. And has a playability, steal two amber. Well, Engold only has one, so gets to steal that one though. Then we'll play Shadow Self as well. This will help protect Magda Rat so that Engold doesn't get to steal Amber back. And we'll also play the Sting, which is a very interesting card. Firstly, it'll gain base node here and Amber, but also it means that you no longer do the skip a forge, uh, sorry, that you no longer do a forge a key step, you're skipping it from now on. That's only this player, so only base node's going to have this, but he gets all amber spent by the opponent when forging keys. So it can be quite powerful for building up 
kind of amber and then quickly building keys. And that's all he's going to play, so we ready the cards. And draws back up, and gold is up once more. So, hmm. I mean, we've got the four untamed. It feels like that makes sense to declare. Uh, oh, of course, we skip forging a key because we don't have enough amber. We have zero amber. I'm, I'm actually tempted, even though there's only two Brobna cards, to play them. And... It's so that I can get a huge amount of damage dealt to Shadow Self to kind of get it close to gone. But at the same time, I want to keep the Dew Fairies in play. Urgh. And there wouldn't be any creatures to return to hand at this point. But I mean, I could play it and get the Amber. Oh, tough decision. Okay, I'm going to go for the bulk. I'm going to go untamed. So we can put those to the side for now. Right. Where do we want to start? Well, we might as well start by playing Regrowth, which is an action. And we'll return a creature, but we don't have any creatures in our discard pile. So we can't do that. But we do gain one Amber. And that'll go to our discard pile. We'll then play an artifact, which will be Nepenthe Seed. So this will allow us to get a card back from our discard pile to our hand. And it's an Omni ability, so we can use this no matter what house we've declared. We're then going to play our two Dew Fairies, which of course go into play Exhausted. And that's us done playing, so we're going to ready our cards. And then we need to draw four more cards. So, we've got too much to protect. Steal all but six of your opponent's Amber. Well, that's not going to help us at the moment. Seek a Needle. Needle. Deal one damage to a creature. If it destroys the creature, gain one Amber. So that's a useful artifact especially if we get some weak creatures out. Gauntlet of Command, ready and fight with a friendly creature. So that'll be useful with the Brobnars that we've already got there. And then our final card into our hand. Ooh, another Brobnar. Grenade Snib, ooh, this is nice. So when this card gets destroyed, the opponent loses two Amber. So you combine this with a couple Seeker Needles <laughs> and you're able to gain um, Amber. <laughs> And Steel Amber with it. It's, it's a pretty nice combo. So, hmm, looks like we're probably going to go Brobnar next time. But let's see what Base Node does. So Base Node skips his Forger Key step, even though he doesn't have enough Amber anyway. And then he's going to declare House Shadow again. And his first thing is going to be to play this action, Ghostly Hand. So this will give him two Amber, but it also means that if his opponent has just one amber, he steals it, which is the case. And of course, I forgot to give him his two amber for playing the card. It's a very nice amber gain card, that. So that puts him up to five. Then he's going to use Mag to the Rat to reap, taking him up to six, and Shadow Self to reap taking him up to seven. So he declares check and he readies his cards and that's his turn done. Oh, and sorry, he does need to draw up. He needs one more card. Okay, so gold has a handful of Brobnar and no amber. So skips the forger key and is gonna play Brobnar. See, it's a tough decision though, because you could get four amber by reaping with these Dew Fairies, which would be pretty powerful but then it would be using no cards from hand, which just, urgh, no cards from hand does not seem like a good idea. So we're gonna go for the Brobnar. We're gonna go with Grenade, Snib there, and Valda there. So they're kind of protecting the flanks a bit for the Dew Fairies, try and keep them alive a bit longer. We'll then play the Gauntlet of Command, which is an artifact. And then finally, we'll play Relentless Assault, which allows us to uh, ready and fight with up to three different friendly creatures, one at a time. So, what we're going to do is we'll start by using a Dew Fairy. So we'll ready and fight with a Dew Fairy. And it will attack... Hmm. Well, we... <sighs> See, our opponent has seven amber, so we want to kind of get that off them. So if we can destroy Magda the Rat, we'd steal two, that would stop them. But they can't forge a key next time anyway, so... Urgh. 
I think the thing to do is we'll attack Shadow Self, because Shadow Self doesn't deal any damage back. So it's nice and safe to do, and we can deal two damage to Shadow Self, which, when it has nine power, that'll nicely kind of knock it down a bit. We'll then ready and fight with Valda, who gets plus two damage while attacking an enemy on the flank. So with power six, that'll be eight, which will then kill Shadow Self. So Shadow Self is out of the picture. And that just leaves Magda the Rat. So we could ready and fight with Grenade Snib, um, which would then, ooh, which would then kill Grenade Snip. No, it wouldn't because of Elusive. So yeah, one of them attacks Magda the Rat because of Elusive, no one takes any damage. And then we're done. So we ready all our cards and we get to draw four more. So we've already got two in hand. Oh, we get a cannon, so deal two damage to a creature. That'll be useful for getting rid of Magda. Ooh, ooh, I love this card. I mean, who wouldn't? It's a rocket dragon. It, it is a rocket dragon. Power 12. Problem is, so hard to get out. You have to have seven amber or more. But yeah, it's, it's an awesome creature. Okay, what else we got? Niffleape, okay. Um, I mean, we've got a few untamed out, so not bad. And it gets to ignore Taunt and Elusive, so it'll be useful for potentially killing off Magda. And what else have we got? Final card. Mermook. Uh, another creature. Free strength. Uh, opponent's keys cost one more. So that's a useful ability. Yeah, not bad. Um, looks like we're probably going to either go... Well, yeah. You see, we've got the annoying situation of in hand, even split. So we could do whatever. Um, see, Shadow would be useful if he ends up with even more, because we could steal a load of it. But let's see what he does. And he skips his Forger Key step due to the sting here. So, skip straight to Clearing House. He's going to go for Sanctum. And he's going to start by playing an Oath of Poverty. So, this will gain him one Amber, and he destroys each of his artifacts. So, gains one, destroys one artifact, because that's all he has, which is the Sting, which will gain him two more Amber, and now means he can forge a key again on his next turn, which he has plenty of Amber to do. He's then gonna play, he'll play Protectrix, which when he reaps with it allows him to heal creatures, and um, has strength for five. He'll play Raiding Knight. Unfortunately, the ability here is a playability capture one. There's nothing for him to capture. But he does have two armor and four power. And he'll play another Raiding Knight on the other side. And I'm just going to put some tokens on there to represent. Actually, we'll use these black cubes so we can keep track of their armor each turn so that we know when it's gone or not. And that's him done. So he will ready. Of course, declaring check. And he draws four more cards. So base node has ten amber. It's going to be difficult to stop him forging a key. I mean, we could go for using untamed. That would make cost one. That's not going to be enough to stop him. Um, I mean, we would be able to also steal two. But no, that would still leave him with enough. So Untamed isn't going to be able to stop him. So let's forget about Untamed. Let's look at Shadow. So we could deal one, gain, that's not going to do anything. Too much to protect, steal all but six of your opponents. Now, if I could use these two in combo, that would be great. But um, I'm not going to be able to do that. So, hmm. stealing six, I mean, that would steal us four. That, that would be pretty nice. Plus, we'd gain that. Uh, but it wouldn't stop him forging a key. So, I'm thinking not that. Now, there's no chance we're going to be able to play Ke uh, Kelifi Dragon anytime soon. Let's just call it Rocket Dragon, much simpler. And the cannon's not going to help us. But what we can do is we've got Nepenthe Seed here, and we've got Gauntlet of Command. So we'd be able to use... Grenade snip twice, 
and potentially kill him twice, which would cost our opponent four, still not quite enough. But if we also manage to take out Magda the Rat, we'll steal two, which would be enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for Brobnar. We're going to start by discarding Rocket Dragon. Awesome card, but we're not going to be playing it anytime soon. We'll play our artifact, but we can't use it this turn. We will... Let's see. If we attack Magda the Rat with Valda, elusive means neither takes any damage. We can then attack Magda the Rat with Grenade Snip, which will kill Grenade Snip and deal two damage to Magda the Rat. So, destroyed, your opponent loses two amber. So we'll take that off him, and that'll go to our discards. We'll then use Nepenthe Seed, which is an Omni. Sacrifice this, return a card from your discard pile to your hand. So we'll return Grenade Snib. We'll play Grenade Snib. We'll use Gauntlet of Command, ready and fight with a friendly creature. Boom, boom, to attack Magda the Rat again. This will destroy both creatures, and that will mean our opponent loses two for Grenade Snip, taking them down to six, but Magda the Rat leaves play, so we steal two more, taking them down to four and putting us up to two. So we have stopped them forging a key, but it was expensive as turns go. So ready in cards, we need to draw two more. So we've got a Skeleton Key, another Shadow One. A friendly creature captures one Amber, potentially useful. And a Brobnar. Punch, deal three damage to a creature. Um, probably less useful being the only Brobnar card in our hand at the moment. Then it's Bay's Node's turn. And he's going to declare Shadow. He doesn't have enough to forge a key anymore. And he's going to play Ghostly Hand again. So he gains two Amber, which takes him back up to six. But... Uh, Gold has more than one, so he doesn't get to steal any. And he will then also play Poison Wave, which will gain him another Amber, taking him to seven, and allows him to deal two damage. Well, it doesn't allow him. It means he deals two damage to each creature. So two damage to Dew Fairy will kill it. And again, kills it. And then we've got Valda can take the two damage, so... Put two damage tokens on Valda. Raiding Knight just takes his armor off. Just takes his armor off. Unfortunately, Protectrix here does take two damage. And that's then the end of his turn. So armor goes back on. And he draws back up. And of course, that is check. Now, we need to stop him. None of the cards already in play are going to help us. We've got Skeleton to Key, which will allow us to capture one which means we'll then just need to get one more. But if we played too much to protect first, we'd steal all balls six, then we can capture one, which would be enough. And we'd also be able to put Seeker Needle into play ready for future use. And I don't think, I mean, punches are going to help us. Niffle Ape. Murmok would increase the cost, but he's got seven, so that's not going to do it. So, yep, yeah, it's going to be Shadow. So we'll put Seeker Needle in play. We'll play too much to protect, so we gain one Amber. And we steal all but six, so we steal one. Could be worse. Then we'll play Skeleton Key. Oh, you know what? This isn't going to stop him, because it's an artifact, not an action. Ah. OK, well, nothing's going to stop him, that means. So we might as well play this, and then we'll be able to capture in future turns. And that is us done. So we need to draw three more cards, and we get... Nerve Blast, steal one, which would be very useful. Mighty Tiger, deal four damage to an enemy creature when played. And Way of the Wolf, this creature gains Skirmish. Very nice ability. Very nice ability indeed. Okay. It is Base Node's turn, and he has six Amber. So he'll spend it to forge a key, because he has no choice. He has to do that. Then he gets to pick his house, and he is going to pick Logos. And he's going to start by playing Transposition Sandals, which will gain him an Amber, taking him back up to one. 
and he's going to play this upgrade on Protectrix. So this allows Protectrix, actually no, not Protectrix, Raiding Knight. So it allow this character to use this action to swap with another friendly creature in the battle line and then use that friendly creature. So it will allow him to use things out of turn. He's going to play Ganymede on the right side here, I think. He's then going to discard Efferescent Principle, I think, because he doesn't want to gain the chain. So he could cause some loss, but yeah, he's just going to discard this to get it out of hand. He's also going to discard Neutron Shark because it would just decimate the board. Um, and he's quite happy with his current board state. So I think the sensible thing is to just discard this for now. It can be a really useful card to close down combos that have been set up, but doesn't really want it at the moment in his hand. So that's him done. He'll ready and draw up. So we don't have enough to forge a key. Let's see, gold has Nerve Blast and these two artifacts, but <clears throat> it's not going to do much. We've got three cards in play for Brobnar, but then only the one in hand. Again, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to get some of these untamed down because we've got four cards in hand, set up a better turn for the other houses. And I really like this way of the wolf, which will give skirmish. Um, and I don't think any of these are better. So what we'll do is we'll put the skirmish on Valder and that will then be really helpful because he'll be able to start killing off some of these creatures without taking damage. And let's see, we'll just put these other three into play. So we've made his keys cost more and we can deal four damage to an enemy creature. So we could kill the Archivist, or we could kill the Protectrix. Now, I'm inclined to kill Protectrix because the Reap Heal ability on this, he could start using this to a lot of effect. So, yeah, I think we're going to do that. So, four damage is enough to kill him. We'll close his line. It means we now outnumber him on monsters. Uh, there's nothing else we can do with Untamed though, so it's ready and drawing up. Didn't gain. Oh, we should have gained an amber. I was about to say we didn't gain any amber, but that not true. We did gain one, taking us to five though. So still not enough to uh, forge a key next turn. So we get to draw four new cards though. Oh, we got. Another untamed, lost in the woods, choose two friendly creatures and two enemy creatures, shuffle each chosen creature into its owner's deck. So, potentially useful for like getting rid of some of the sanctum creatures, etc. And we've got the sting. Ah, so this is a card they both have in common because we've already seen Baznode use the sting. So we could now use that. Unfortunately, he's nowhere near forging a key yet. But still, it might be useful to get down for future. Then, Way of the Bear. So this creature gains Assault 2, which is a very nice ability. If we can get this along with the Way of the Wolf on Valda, that will be really useful. And our final card, Booby Trap. So this is just nice damage creatures, um, which could be useful. And we'll go with our shadow things. So, yeah. Okay, let's see what... Base node will do. So he's not got enough amber to forge a car, uh, to forge a key. He's gonna say Sanctum as his house. He's gonna start by playing Bulwark, which is gonna boost the armor of anyone around him. So we can go two extra armor on there. He has two armor. And we're then gonna play Sequis, who has two armor normally, and when he reaps, he captures. So let's slide these down a bit. And that will put him up to four armor, so nice and protected. I really like the Bulwark card, the fact that it just boosts armor so much. Um, and then... I think we're going to go for a gatekeeper and we're going to put that over on the end here so if your opponent has seven or more amber capture all but five of it unfortunately my opponent only has five but he also 
has one armor, and he has power five. So it's not all bad. Now, this raiding knight here, I think we'll use the transposition sandals action that he's gained to swap with a friendly creature. So he'll lose that two armor, but he's going to swap with this archivist. So that exhausts him, but we can now use the archivist. So we're going to use the archivist to reap. He gains two armor for being next to bulwark. So reaping gains one amber, and he can archive a card. So he is going to archive that one. And the archive is kept secret, so you don't get to know what it is. I do. You don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, being so childish there. Um, and finally, we'll have this raiding knight also do a reap, so we get another amber. And then everyone readies. Which uh, just made me think of, oh, what was it? Gladiators. Gladiators ready. Contestants ready. And he's going to draw four more cards. Okay, so Gold is still one amber short of forging his first key. Now, it's tempting to declare Brobnar this time and, you know, go with these and start destroying things with Valda. But that would be a lot easier if we get the way of the bear on him as well. So, I mean, we could go for Shadow. We've got three cards, plus we've got our two um, artifacts down there. But, hmm, I think actually thing to do is get Valda beefed up ready. So let's go for Untamed again. And we'll start by using each of our Untamed creatures. I think that's the most sensible thing. So we'll reap, gaining one, putting us to six. And we'll reap, putting us at seven. And we'll reap, taking us to eight amber for gold. Then we've also got the cards in the hand. So we'll play the Way of the Bear on Valda beefing him up even more, because he's now got Assault 2, and that gains us yet another Amber, so taking us to 9, so we've got quite a bit now. We'll then play Lost in the Woods, so that'll gain us one more Amber. So we're up to 10, so we've suddenly got a lot of Amber. Choose two friendly creatures and two enemy creatures, shuffle each chosen creature into its owner's deck, so I think playability probably makes the most sense. Definitely want to keep him out. Definitely want to keep him out because he's increasing key cost. So we'll go with those two for gold. And for base node, hmm. Well, I, I want to get rid of the bulwark because bulwark is too powerful. That boosting the people next to it, it's just going to make it so hard for Valder to do what he needs to do. And, hmm. Now, you see, I don't like Sequus's Reap Capture 1 ability, but i also a bit worried about the Archive ability. I think we'll get rid of Sequus, that Reap Capture 1. I don't like that being there. And we draw two more cards. So, Ganga Chieftain again. You may ready and fight with a neighbouring creature. That's probably going to be useful soon, especially now we've got Valda ready to go. And Urchin, uh, play Steel One. So this works really nicely with the Seeker Needle, because you can kill it, and then you play it, Steel One, and then you kill it, and gain one as well. So that, that's a really quite nice combo there. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot of Shadow, and we've got the Brobnar. Not sure what we're going to do next turn, but we have finally got a check position. Well, let's say finally, I think we managed it once already. Hopefully we can keep it up, so let's see what happens. So, base node can't forge a key. He's going to declare house sanctum. He's going to reap with gatekeeper, gaining one amber. Uh, he'll reap with this raiding knight here, gaining another amber. He'll use the transposition sandals with the raiding knight to swap with the archivist. And the archivist will reap, gaining a six amber. But because of Mermok here, it's not enough for him to declare check and he can archive a card, which he will do. And that's him done. Then Gold finally gets to forge his first key using six amber. Then Declaring House, I mean, we've got four shadow cards here in hand, but 
I'm not sure they're particularly useful at this point, although he is close to uh, forging a key himself, so getting Sting down could be really beneficial. Or we could go for Brobnar and probably wipe out... <laughs> uh, well, let's see, we'd be able to attack once, twice, three times with Valder. So we'd be able to take out... Yeah, we'd be able to destroy his entire line. So we can either wipe his board or be prepared for when he forges a key. Well, he's not going to be able to forge a key this time. He hasn't quite got enough. So let's go for Brobnar, and then we can always do that next time when he is in a position. Yeah, that works. So we'll start with Valder. Actually, no, we'll start with Punch. So that'll gain us one amber. So gold's up to five amber and deals three damage to a creature, which will be to the Archivist, who only has free power, so that will kill him. Then we'll use the cannon to do two damage, which will take out this Raiding Knight's armour here. Then we'll use Valda to attack the Raiding Knight which will do two damage immediately because of the way of the bear. And he's then got skirmish, so he's taking no damage. He's got a strength of eight, so yeah, more than enough kills the raiding knight. Then we'll play Ganga Chieftain, which has the ability you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. So if we play it there, we can ready and fight with Valda again. And of course, his two damage from Skirmish will take out the armor. And then he's hitting him for eight and taking no damage back. Then we'll use the Gauntlet of Command, ready and fight with a friendly creature. So we're ready with him again. And um, we've only used him three times, so we're not breaking the rule of six. And we fight attacking this, which will. It's going to take him out <laughs> and take no damage in turn. So very effective round there for clearing out base nodes people. Um, but we didn't play many cards from hand. So we're only going to get to draw two cards. And we didn't gain an awful lot with regards to Amber. We're still only at five Amber. So we're not going to be able to forge a key next time. Then the two cards we've drawn. Ah, we've got the Ritual of Balance. If your opponent has six or more... Um, amber, steal one as an action. Another gauntlet of command, so potentially useful uh, to be able to use Valda a fourth time in a round, but obviously there's nothing to fight now, so unless Baysnode plays characters, creatures on his turn, it's not going to help us. Baysnode has six amber, but because of Murmok's ability, his keys cost seven to forge, so he can't forge a key. Um, Housewise, he's going to declare shadows. And he's going to play Speed Seagull, Sigil, Sigil, uh, which will gain him one amber, taking him to seven, which is enough to forge a key. Next time, he'll then play another Speed Sigil. Um, hmm. Now, this is a really weird combination to have because they, they don't give any additional effect for having two. So, kind of pointless having two in a deck, but there you go. Um, then he'll play Special Delivery, which is another artifact. It's a round of shadow artifacts going down. But it does also get him another amber, which now puts him at nine amber. And this will allow him, you, when he's playing with anyone, it's an Omni ability, to sacrifice the card to deal free damage to a flank creature. And if the damage destroys that creature, purge it. And then finally, he's going to play Silvertooth, which its ability would allow it to enter play ready, but so would both of these speed <laughs> sigils. Um, yeah, he's gaining pretty much nothing from that. But it does mean he can reap. So he gains yet another amber. So he's on 10 amber. And that's him done. So it is a case of check, which probably means it's a good time for gold to declare shadow so that he can play sting. And that way he'll get the 7 amber that uh, Baysnode is going to play pay to uh, forge a key next turn. And it will gain him 1 amber now, which is enough for him to forge a key next turn. Uh, ah, but he wouldn't then get to forge a key. 
Hmm. I think it might still be the best thing to do. Still one, still one. Yeah, I think, I think it will be the best thing to do. And then he'll have a huge stockpile of amber ready to use. So he's going to start with playing the sting. So I'll gain him one amber, taking him up to six. And he'll then play Urchin, which means he steals one, so he's on seven. He'll play Nerve Blast, steal one. And if you do, do two damage to a creature. So he will steal one and he'll do two damage, which will he'll do to this creature, the Silver Tooth, which will take it out of play. Now, he could play the booby trap, but he'd have to target his own creatures. So I don't think that's a good idea. Instead, I think what would make the sense is for him to discard that. So he's going to discard that. Then he will use Skeleton Key. So a friendly creature captures one. Um, I mean, we might as well... Hmm, I was going to say give it to Valder, but he's probably going to want to kill Valder sooner rather than later. So let's give it to Gengar. Now, we've nearly got him to a point he can't forge a key, but we don't actually want to do that anyway. Uh, uh, we could gain another one if we destroyed the Urchin. I mean, the Urchin's not going to do a whole lot for us there, so I think we're going to do that. Let's, let's use the Seeker Needle to destroy the Urchin, gaining us another Amber. So we've got lots of amber now. Once he's forged a key and we've got the amber from the sting, we'll be set up for, with tons of amber. We've just got to hope he doesn't steal it off of us. Sounds like a good turn to me. Um, so we then need to draw four more cards. So, ooh, we've got a Maverick, uh, Dexter. See, he's usually logos. He's usually logos. Um, so that will allow to capture, and it's a shadow card. I'm thinking we're going to play shadow next to get rid of the sting, to be honest. Uh, we've got an Untamed, Regrowth, which will allow us to get a creature back. Uh, Mighty Tiger, deal four damage to a creature, which isn't bad, but I mean, he's not got many creatures out at the moment, so it's not going to help us that much. And Anger, ready and fight with a friendly creature. Uh, again, we don't really need to be fighting at the moment, so I think next time it's probably going to be Shadow, but of course it does all depend what Base Node does on his turn. Oh, I just realised something. Before I destroyed that Urchin, he actually would have been ready because of the speed sigil, so I could have used him to reap, which just going to retroactively because um, base node hasn't taken his turn yet. Just do that, so giving him one more amber doesn't make a huge difference, but it is a difference. So base node is going to start by forging a key, which is his second key, and because of gold having the sting, all of that lovely amber goes to gold, who now has 12, 17 amber. So he's got more than enough to forge his last two keys. So we need to get the amber to forge this first key. Bayes now needs that as quickly as possible. Now, declaring house, he's gonna declare logos and he's gonna pick up his archives into his hand. He is gonna start by playing library access. So, for the remainder of the turn, each time you play another card, draw a card. Okay. He's then going to play Library of Babel. Action, draw a card. So, he'll draw a card for that. And he'll draw a card for the library access. Uh, those were not the cards he wanted. Um, okay. He will... He will play the Bat Drone which, because of speed, Seagull will be ready. Uh, this has Skirmish, 2 power, Fight, Steal, 1. So he's going to use it to fight, doing 2 damage to Valder. I think makes the most sense, or... Hmm. Yeah, 2 damage to Valder. And that'll steal 1 Amber. And he will... Oh, he played a card, so he draws a card. Uh, <laughs> He really wants to be drawing more Logos cards, and he's not. Um, okay, so he'll play Dexter, so he captures one, and he played a card, so he draws a card. <laughs> um, 
not the hand he needs right now. Uh, okay, well, he can, he can play this card. He's going to play Doc Bookton. Uh, yeah, Doc Bookton, which has a reap ability, but he's not going to be able to use that. But he's played a card, so he draws a card. Ah, and finally, it's another one he can use. Um, so, pos Positron Bolt will gain him an amber, for starters. Uh, deal three damage to a flank creature. Deal two damage to its neighbour. Deal one damage to a second creature's other neighbour. Okay, so he's going to target Murmok, who's on the flank, which will deal three damage to, which will kill him. He's then going to do two damage to Valda, which will take him to six damage, which will kill him. And he'll do one damage to Ganga, the chieftain. So that's really cut down Gold's board quite a lot. Uh, and he gets to draw another card, and oh, not one he can use. He does now have eight cards in hand, though. Um, so might have a good turn next time, maybe. All kind of depends what happens. He, he needs a lot more Amber. But anyway, he will ready, and it's back to Gold, who has all the Amber in the world also has the Sting, so skips his forge a key step. So he really needs to get rid of Sting. So despite the fact that he's only got one Shadow card in hand, he's going to declare Shadow. So first thing he's going to do, action, sacrifice the Sting. So now he'll be able to forge a key on his next turn. Then he'll play Dexter, which because of base nodes, speed sequels, go sigils, goes into play ready. And when he goes into play, he captures one, so he'll do that. Not that base node had much, he only had two. Um, and then, I guess he might as well reap, which will gain yet another amber, which he doesn't need, but it means if he gets stuff stolen, he's got more chance of surviving it. Then he'll use skeleton key to capture one, leaving base node with zero. And he might as well use Seeker Needle to do one damage. And I think he's going to do it to the Bat Drone here because it'll be the easiest for him to actually kill and he's stealing stuff by fighting. And that's it. So he gets to draw one card, another Skeleton Key. Um, not terribly useful right now, but don't know. Maybe he'll lose a lot and yeah, we'll see. Okay, so Base Node has no Amber. And he's going to declare Sanctum as his house. So, first thing he's going to do is play an artifact round table, which will gain him one amber. And means that each friendly knight creature gets plus one power and taunt. He's then going to play... I think he's going to go for he's going to go for a bulwark here just slip these down uh, that might be enough <laughs> so bulwark two armor and gives two armor to the dock next to him oh and and he would enter play ready so, mm, do we want to do that differently? No, we'll, we'll keep. So, he enters play ready. Um, hmm. Which opens up an interesting opportunity. But, never mind. Uh, he's then going to play... Sorry, so they're He's taunting, he's taunting Sequis. So Sequis will get. Hmm, I might actually. Let's undo. Let's play Sequis first. I think. No. No, we'll keep with Sequis there. So he has two armor plus two for Bulwark. Then I'm going to play another Bulwark. So he has two armor and he gives Sequis two more armor. So Sequis now has six armor. I'm then going to play champion 
FNL, who has six power, well, sorry, seven power because of the um, plus one power from round table. And he has one armor normally and gets two more for being next to Bulwark. And I'm then going to play a Raiding Knight, which has two armor. And when I play this, I capture one. So we'll capture one amber there. Um, so that's a lot of cards played in one turn. He's then going to... He's then going to use Special Delivery, which is an Omni. Sacrifice Special Delivery deals free damage to a flank creature. If this damage destroys that creature, purge it. So he's going to do that to Dexter here. So that will destroy it meaning it's purged, so we'll just put it under the Archon card. He had two captured, which comes back to Bay's node. And he's still got Bulwark he can use, so he could attack. He's only got two armor, though, so he would take free damage. Or he could reap. Now, either way, he's going to gain one amber. But if he reaps, he doesn't get rid of that chieftain, and... If he attacks, he gets rid of the chieftain. So he's going to attack. It'll p give him a bit of damage. Give him free damage because two goes on the armor, leaving free. But it'll take out the chieftain. Okay, and then he resets everyone. And he draws back up to six. So he's now gone for his deck, so he needs to shuffle his discards. Gold has plenty to forge keys, but he can only forge one, unfortunately. But he's still got more than enough to forge his next key. So at the moment, he's winning the race, the race to free keys. So all he needs to do is get to his next turn without having his um, amber stolen away from him. So Brobnar... Uh, it's all about fighting with what's there and what's down, so though no creature's not going to help. We could put some untamed creatures into play, but that wouldn't do an awful lot. It would allow him to do a bit of damage. Um, or we could just go for Shadow, get to put another Skeleton Key down, and we'll get to... We can use the Seeker Needle to destroy the Bat Drone which will gain one amber. So I think, I think we're actually just going to go with that. Uh, might not be the most sensible, but we'll go Shadow, play Skeleton Key, and use that to do one damage, which will take him to two damage on the back drone, killing it, which means he gains one more amber. So he's got ten amber, so it is a checkmate situation. And he played one card, so he gets to draw one more, and it's another Seeker Needle. So, what can Gold, uh, no, Gold is the one, what can Bayesno do to stop Gold? Well, he's going to declare Sanctum, and he's going to play Honourable Claim. So, this will gain him one Amber, taking him up to five. And each friendly Knight creature captures one Amber, which will be... Just enough, because it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Which means gold is down to five amber and will not be able to win. But he's also not yet in a position to win. He's only got five amber. But he's not done yet, because he's going to reap with Sequis, which allows him to capture one, taking gold down to four. And, of course, means he gains one, taking him up to six. And for safety, he's also going to reap with one, two, three, four other knights, which will gain him four more amber. So he's got four more than he needs. So can gold now stop um, Baysnose from winning? Baysnode. Well, nothing he has in play is going to be able to take five amber away. I mean, the two skeleton keys could capture two, but he has no creatures in play. In hand, he's got another Seeker Needle, which won't help. 
Tiger would allow him to do four damage. Again, not going to help damaging creatures at this point. Return a creature from your discard pile to your hand. Well, that's only going to help if there's an untamed creature in here that will steal a lot. And I don't think we have. We could increase key cost by one. Not going to cut it. Um, Dew Fairy, no. Yeah, there's no creature there that's going to help us. Um, so that was regrowth. Uh, we wouldn't be able to use this this turn, but again, it would only take one. So, yeah, these are just ready and fight. So we'll play out the turn. Um, he'll go shadow and play seek a needle, and doesn't really do much, which means base node forges his third key and is victorious. So Bayes Node is our lead winner for this matchup. It was a really tight, exciting match, actually. Really enjoyed it. Hope you did too.